PostgreSQL is an open source relational database and is going to be one of the most common databases you'll run into as a data engineer. You'll most often see it as the back end of a database or a source for your analytics platform. But it's also something that some companies may choose to build their entire data warehouse and data marts on top of. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to download and install Postgres on your local machine. We'll look at how we can create our own database objects and then finally write some queries to insert some data. The first step to install Postgres is to go to postgresql.org. And if you can't find that, just Google how to install Postgres and it'll come up. And from here, we have the different download options. For me, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to download for Mac OS, but you would pick what works for you. There are different ways you can go about doing this, but I'm going to download the installer because not only does it come with Postgres SQL, but also PG Admin, which is a graphical tool for managing and developing the databases. So let's go ahead and download the installer and I'll just do the latest one as of the time of this recording, downloading it to my local and open it up. All right, here it is. Double click and I met with this setup screen. So we'll walk through this wizard next. Uh, where does it want to install? Uh, you can pick a specific directory if you'd like, but we'll just keep it as is next. What different components do you want? Uh, I do want the SQL server. We want PG admin again, because that is the interface that we're going to use. Stack builder is something that you can use to download additional tools and then other uh, command line tools will go right to your machine that you can do here as well. So we'll just do all of those. Why not and select? Yes. Next. Now we need to provide a password for the super user of the database that comes pre built with it. And that username is Postgres. It's a locked Unix user. Uh, and so we just need to put in a password for that. And next now the port number, you can leave this as default unless you have something otherwise that you need to select locale. This is going to be based on where you live. And if you need to change that, going to keep it as the default, a final summary and next. Now it's ready to go. Okay. And we'll let this run and install Postgres. And just like that, you know, in just in less than 30 seconds, I'd say everything is installed, I'm not going to launch this and finish. All right. So that's done. Let's close this out and open up PG admin so that we can interact with our database. So what I'll do is I'll come up here to search and do PG admin. There it is. We can see it's loading up here. All right. So now another master password we need to set here to learn more about what this is. You can click this question mark and it'll show you that this is required to secure and later unlock save server passwords. It's only for the desktop mode. It's basically a way to help you secure your passwords and just be safe in the case something happens. So, so go ahead and put that in there and okay. All right. So here we are, we're in PG admin. So now it's asking us to connect to the server and it's asking for the Postgres password. That's what we created initially when it asked for that super user password earlier in the setup. So put yours in and save it, click okay. And now if we go over here to servers, we can see we are in and it's showing us some statistics and information here that we can monitor. And just like that, we have a Postgres database running on our local machine. Uh, so if we look at databases here, we can see it has the default Postgres database that comes out of the box with it. But what we want to do is just see how do we add some data here real quick for a very basic proof of concept. So what we can do is right click database and we'll give it a name. I'll call this demo DB. Uh, the owner, you can pick a specific user if you want. Once you start creating groups and permissions and all that stuff, but we'll just keep it the basic user. You can define different definitions, security parameters, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and it'll show you the SQL generated from it and who's the owner. And let's just run this. Let's create this demo DB. And there we go. We have now a demo DB uh, created in our database, created on our server. So again, this is the server. Here are the two databases we have, and we'll work in demo DB. Now within the database, we have a bunch of other things that you can do here. Again, outside the scope of this intro video, but this is where we can start to create other objects like more schemas and tables and put them all in here. And by default, you know, you have the public schema that just comes out of the box. And here's where you would find your tables and your views. But obviously we don't have any because this is just a blank brand new database. So let's create a table again. You could do the same thing here. Let's say we want to create a table called employees. You can set the, the owner, the schema, if you want it to be something else, if you had created another schema in here, and then we can set the columns as well. You know, the ID, the type, set the precision if it's the primary key and go through all of this. So obviously you could have done this in SQL as well, but I'll just go through and add all the columns I want for this table real quick. 
Okay, now we can see what the SQL would look like here. And this is what it's going to run. And let's save this. All right, so now we have a table within here. If you click on this here, you can see the properties of the table, the SQL that was written, statistics, dependencies, all sorts of stuff here. But let's now insert some data into this table. And to do that, we'll actually write a query. So let's go up here to tools and we'll do query tool to give us a new window that will allow us to write a query. And what we'll write is insert into public dot employees and it's auto filling for us because we are writing in the context of demo DB. It only gives us options for that table. And I'll copy this in here, something like this. You know, some of the all time greatest basketball players ever to grace the court. So let's go ahead and run this whole query right here. You can click F5 or just click play. And we can see it was successful. And now if we try to select from this table, we should see those values. And there it is. Now you're off and running. You can do whatever it is you want on Postgres and start playing around, uh, experiment, build applications, do whatever you want. So Postgres is just the start for learning how databases work and the different options. But if you're looking for something a little bit more and you want to get into the cloud versions, here's a video on Google BigQuery and how to get started with that.